Understanding second order Greeks like Gamma, Charm, and Vanna is essential to grasp how Delta evolves during a trading session. This helps anticipate the hedging behavior of market makers as the market conditions change. Each of these Greeks isolates a different driver of the Delta fluctuation. Gamma reflects a change due to underlying price, Charm reflects the passage of time, and Vanna captures the impact of implied volatility. In practice, these forces act together and often amplify the need for rehedging. Let's start with Gamma. Gamma measures the rate at which Delta changes as the underlying asset price moves. Delta reflects the sensitivity of an options price to the underlying, where Gamma reflects the sensitivity of Delta itself. In mathematical terms, it's the second derivative of the option price with respect to the underlying. As discussed in a previous module, the Delta of a call option starts near zero, when it's far out of the money. It gradually increases towards one as the option moves deep in the money, and this creates a sigmoid shaped curve. For a put, delta starts near negative one when in the money. As the option goes out of the money, delta moves closer to zero. These delta curves become steeper around the strike price, where delta changes the most rapidly. Gamma is the slope of these curves, and it is highest at the strike price and decreases as the option moves further in or out of the money. Gamma itself takes the shape of a bell curve, centered around the strike price. For long option, whether we're talking about a call or a put, gamma is always positive. As expiration approaches, gamma becomes more and more concentrated and amplified near the strike price. For a market maker, this means that the delta hedging adjustments become more abrupt within a very narrow price range. Take a short dated call option as an example. When the underlying is just below the strike and there's little time left, the chance of finishing in the money is low, so delta is almost zero. As the price moves closer to the strike, delta jumps quickly towards 0.5. Once the option gets in the money, delta now approaches one. The speed of this transition defines gamma. The less time until expiration, the sharper the shift. This has important implications for hedging behavior. A market maker who is long gamma will hedge against price movements. If the price goes up, their delta exposure is going to go up. And as a hedging response, they're going to need to sell the underlying. If the price goes down, the delta exposure is going to go down. And as a hedging response, they're going to need to buy the underlying. This aims to keep their position delta neutral. In contrast, a market maker who is short gamma must hedge with the direction of the underlying move. As the underlying rises, they need to buy, and as the price falls, they need to sell with the price going down. This type of hedging can amplify market moves, especially when gamma magnitude is large and concentrated. This hedging dynamic becomes even more aggressive with very short dated options. The delta shift happens over a small range of prices, meaning re-hedging must be faster and more reactive. These flows can contribute to intraday price instability. Gamma is therefore central to understanding short-term market dynamics. Charm, also called Delta Decay, describes how an option's delta evolves as time passes. Take the same delta chart used earlier. Now, instead of focusing on the price changes, let's hold the strike and IV constant and observe what happens as time to expiration decreases. Delta changes depending on how close we are to the expiration and the moneyness of the option. For in the money calls, delta increases moving closer to 1, because the option is more likely to finish in the money and retain intrinsic value. Its behavior becomes more directly tied to the underlying asset. For out of the money calls, delta decreases approaching 0 as the probability of expiring in the money fades, and the price of these options become more disconnected from the underlying price movements. The same pattern applies for puts. For in the money puts, delta decreases moving closer to negative one. As expiration nears, they behave more like a pure short position, tightly linked to the underlying asset. For out of the money puts, delta increases towards zero, reflecting a lower probability of expiring in the money. They gradually lose their sensitivity to the underlying asset. If we now take the derivative of delta with respect to time, we get charm. We notice the following pattern for long options, regardless of whether we're talking about a call or a put. Above the strike, charm is positive. This means the delta increases over time. Below the strike, charm is negative, meaning the delta exposure decreases over time. At the money options, 
charm is close to zero, since there's a 50% chance of expiring either in or out of the money. Their delta exposure remains pretty much stable at around 0.5. Charm plays a crucial role in market makers' hedging behavior. When Charm is negative, Delta falls over time, so market makers need to buy the underlying asset to stay Delta neutral. This is known as a supportive Charm environment because it supports the underlying price. When Charm is positive, Delta increases so they must sell the underlying to rebalance. This is referred to as suppressive Charm. It pressures price lower over time. We can think of Charm as a passive wind. It adds directional flow even when there is no active trend present in the market. If market makers are long options, the typical pattern is supportive charm below the strike and suppressive charm above the strike. This is particularly important when large option positions are clustered around a specific strike. As time runs out, charm can help pin the price near that strike. Of course, when the market maker is long the option, but remember, market makers can also be short the options too, and in that case, the effect flips. Now Charm pushes price away from the short strike as expiration nears. It becomes supportive above the strike and suppressive below. Understanding this flip is essential when interpreting positioning. Charm helps explain how and why price tends to drift, hold, or break away as expiration approaches, often without any news or catalyst. Vana describes how an options delta reacts to a change in IV. While gamma and charm are relatively easy to visualize on a price time chart, like you know a candlestick chart, implied volatility moves on a separate axis. While we can observe correlations, IV changes are pretty much independent. A single option might experience a spike or a drop in IV. This change can either increase or decrease the options delta, depending on whether the contract is in the money or out of the money. The impact is conceptually similar to change in time to expiration. As we've seen, delta exposure is shaped by the probability of an option expiring in the money. When IV increases, market participants are pricing a broader range of possible outcomes. There is more uncertainty around the final value of the underlying asset. This feels like having more time on the clock. In contrast, when IV drops, the range of possible outcomes shrinks. There's less uncertainty like having less time left until the expiration. We can perform a similar analysis as we did for Charm, by looking at delta versus the underlying. This time, keeping expiration constant and adjusting only implied vol, we can clearly observe the effect of Vana. As IV decreases, in the money calls see their delta increase approaching 1. Their odds of finishing in the money have improved and they behave more like the underlying itself. Meanwhile, out of the money calls see their delta fall towards zero, reflecting their lower odds of finishing in the money and becoming more and more disconnected from price movements. The same logic applies for puts. When IV drops, in the money puts see their delta move closer to negative one, behaving more like a direct short position. Out of the money puts, on the other hand, see their delta rise towards zero where the connection with the underlying weakens. When IV increases, the reverse happens. In the money options behave less like the underlying. Why? Well, because there is now more time and more possible outcomes that introduce uncertainty about whether they remain in the money. Out of the money options become more sensitive to the underlying because now with higher IV, there's a greater chance of reaching the strike price. Plotting Vana versus the underlying, we observe a clear structure for long options. Above the strike, Vana is negative. An increase in IV causes a decrease in delta exposure. Below the strike, Vana is positive. Rising IV increases delta exposure. This behavior holds true for both calls and puts. Add the money options have a Vana of about zero because their odds of expiring in or out of the money are pretty much split. Unlike Charm, Vana's effect remains meaningful across multiple expirations. The absolute magnitude of Vana doesn't really vanish with more time. Instead, the moneyness where the effect is more felt shifts with the expiration. In short, all expirations matter when it comes to Vana. Now from a hedging perspective, Vana is more difficult to visualize than Gamma or Charm. This is because IVs operate in a dimension of their own. It has no absolute direct relationship to time or the underlying price changes, which are the two main axes we traders are used to see on the candlestick chart. This makes the hedging impact of Vana somehow less predictable. On top of that, market makers are long, short, a mix of calls, 
puts spread across different strike prices and expirations. In that context, the aggregate effect of IV shifts on their total delta can be trickier to measure. Now, let's explore how we can put all of this in practice.